Welcome to the Defender Radio Holiday Special, The Squirrel Who Stole Solstice. Written and directed by Marisa King. Starring Christy Bolton, Marisa King, and Michael Howie. Original Carol by Julian Sark. Stay tuned after the special for more. Acorns, acorns, golden brown, hiding in holes beneath the ground. Safely we stored you so we might savor you on this solstice night. Acorns, acorns, golden brown. Oh, they never cease their infernal singing. I don't think it's infernal. I think it's whimsical. You would, wouldn't you? With all your, isn't Solstice fun? And isn't Solstice special? And isn't Solstice a funny word? Solstice. It's just weird, you know? Like, Eustace. That's a weird word, too. I have an uncle, Eustace. He is strange. I dislike him almost as much as I dislike Solstice. You don't like Solstice? You have to ask. I despise it. Everyone sharing and caring and singing songs of woodland harmony and well wishes. Yuck. Who doesn't like well wishes? They don't mean any of it. They're just trying to get goodies for themselves. I like goodies. Oh, I know you do. And you are going to have all the goodies you could possibly want. <laughs> Oh boy, I knew it. I've been a particularly good squirrel this year. Magnanimous Moose will surely bring me an avalanche of acorns. Ha! <sighs> Magnanimous Moose is just a tale told by mama squirrels who want to keep their chittering brood quiet and subservient. Nuh-uh. Magnanimous Moose is real. I've seen her. Oh, really? You've seen a glowing white moose wandering through the forest, have you? When the moon is full and the snow falls soft. I know, I know. The great white moose will be seen aloft. And did you see her? Aloft? Well, there was a lot of snow that night, but but I'm sure I saw her, sparkly antlers and all. She was beautiful. You probably just saw a cloud passing over the moon. You are far too impressionable, Nutty. Besides... There won't be any moldy moose for anyone in the forest this year. I'll make sure of that. Why are you so angry about Solstice? What did Solstice ever do to you? That's just it. Solstice has never done anything to me or for me. Every year there are some lovely acorns waiting for you when you wake up all wrapped in pine branches. You'll love those. Bah! What use do I have for acorns? I collect acorns all fall. I have a stash of acorns that's the envy of the forest. I don't want acorns. Who wouldn't want acorns? A squirrel with too many acorns and no tail. That's who. But that's so. You can't mean... I mean, there's no way... Magnanimous Moose can't bring you a tail. Oh, can't she? If she can fly and sprinkle pixie dust. No, that's pixies on Spring Awakening, not mooses on... And bring all the woodland creatures together for one peaceful night. Then she can certainly bring me a new tale. That proves there's no ungainly undulate bringing everyone gifts. That doesn't mean she doesn't exist. Just that she can't make someone's tail grow back. A magic moose could do anything she wanted. But there's no such thing as magic. And the only moose I know are no more than dunderheaded dung spreaders. (gasps) And it's time that everyone accepted that and gave up this ridiculous solstice nonsense. But solstice isn't just about magnanimous moose. It's about sharing and caring and belonging and singing and peace and harmony and... Ugh boring. If I can't have my tail, then nobody can have anything. Isn't that a little, um, what's the word now? Ah, uh, diabolical? What's diabolical? Is my tail being bitten off by that terrifying metal creature from beyond the forest edge? The squirrel slayer. 
I was lucky to get away with my life, but my tail, my beautiful tail, just lying there on that hard, smelly surface, being attacked again and again by an army of squirrel slayers. Oh, there was no way to save it. Oh, stop. I hate that story. It's so awful. More awful than living the reality of being a tailless squirrel. Laughed at by the denuncios, denounced by the McRadishes, ridiculed by the O'Leafs. I will not be disrespected any longer. They are kind of mean about it. Well, they won't have time to be mean this year. They'll be too busy trying to save their precious solstice. From who? Who do you think? further. It's super heavy. Of course it's heavy. Heavy with all the woodland gifts from our gullible forest friends. Acorns and berries and pine boughs and feathers and all the other solstice gifts that are now all ours. It was kind of nice how everyone just gave us whatever we asked for when we said it was for the raccoon orphans down in Oak Glade. Nice? Nice? It was completely thick-headed of them. Oh, hello, Mrs. Bunnikins. I'm so sorry to ask this, but we are in desperate need for donations to the Wayward Raccoon Fund. I wonder if you could spare some of your solstice bunny cake for a worthy cause. And she just gave it to us! No questions asked! Well, I'd say that's because it's the giving season. It's the getting season. She has completely missed the point. But we certainly are getting just what we want. But we're just gonna hide it all for a little while to teach everyone a lesson about making fun of your non-tail, and then we'll give it back, right? Oh, sure. We'll give it back. <laughs> oh, good. I was beginning to feel badly that nobody would have any solstice cheer this year because, uh, well, uh, we uh, stole it all. We are simply teaching our fellow creatures a stern life lesson. Nothing comes for free. Well, we got all this for free. Uh, da, 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 because of my wiliness. Because I devised a brilliant plan and then executed it to perfection. Also because people just gave it to us when we asked. Da, 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 you're missing the point, Nutty. Now listen, I'm going to tell this story one more time. In the beginning. I had a tail, and I very much liked my tail. It was a thick, fluffy tail that kept me warm in winter and made me very dashing in the summer. It defined my very squirrelishness, and without my squirrelishness, I am a mere shadow of a rodent, a walking mockery of what it is to be a chitterer. Oh, why, hello, Nutso and Nutty. I'm glad I caught up with you. Mrs. Denuncio! Oh, uh, goodness, I, I hadn't expected anyone to be using this path so late. Uh, oh, well, Mr. McRaddish told me that you had headed this way after picking up their donations a tail fluff for the poor wee raccoon babies down at the Glade. And I didn't want to miss out on giving you my donation. Uh, what now? Oh, well, what you're doing is so important and such a wonderful idea that I just had to be a part of it. But... I don't have a tail. I'm sorry? My tail? You always said that I would never have a good idea once I lost my tail. Oh, dear. Did I say that? My, my, I, I must have been having a very bad day. And it's obvious I was wrong because here you are being the absolute best solstice squirrel I have ever known. Well, I don't want to brag, but... <laughs> and not so? I'll let you in on a little secret. I think I was so mean to you that day because, well, I also lost my tail. This one is a fake. What? That ravishingly beautiful appendage? Oh, yes. I lost my tail years ago when I made a very ill-timed leap from a spruce branch and, well, you can imagine the rest. Ugh. You mean 
You haven't had a tail all these years? Nope. I just gathered all the spare fur and hair I could find from the forest floor and used some goldenrod to tie it together around my waist. See right here? See where the fur doesn't quite match? Oh my goodness, I never would have guessed. It's beautiful, Mrs. D. Why, thank you, Nutty. It took me a whole year to make it. But you know what? I don't actually need it. In fact, sometimes I just leave it at home. Especially on those hot summer days when my tail would just get far too hot. Oh, it's quite freeing, really, roaming around without it. A and it makes swimming easier, doesn't it? Egg, exactly. No sopping fur to weigh you down. I do enjoy paddling in the river, Son's tail. I find it very relaxing. Almost like being weightless. Well, there you have it. Huh. We're actually two of a kind. Peas in a pod, why don't you? <laughs> and now... I'd like to pass my tail along. What? Well, as I said, I don't really need it. And those raccoon orphans, well, they're going to need something warm to cuddle with since they lost their mama. So, oh, this synthetic tail will be perfect for them. Oh, well, gosh, Miss D. I don't know what to say. It's awfully kind of you. Oh, not a bit. This was all your idea, Nutso. I'm just happy I could help. Happy solstice to you both. Oh my gosh, Nutso, you did it! You got your tail for solstice! Oh, but I can't... Uh, well, well, it's just that... Uh, it doesn't feel right. What? It doesn't feel right to take it from me. Mrs. D wants the raccoons to have it. Um, but there are no raccoons. We made them up. Oh, uh, y yes, of course. W well, let's just... Put the tail on the sled and we'll figure out what to do with it later. But you said that- I know what I said. Now mush! Oh, Nutso, there you are. Mr. Leaf? I just passed Mrs. Denuzio and she told me about your sleigh. Sled. It's more of a sled. Oh, potato, potato. How can I help you, Mr. Leaf? Well, I want to donate to the Raccoon Relief Fund, of course. You too? But of course. What kind of a possum would I be if I didn't help out my fellow creatures? Oh, uh, I don't know. The kind of a possum who makes fun of people for not having a tail. What? I never. Um, last Leapfrog Day, you said that a squirrel without a tail wouldn't amount to a hill of beans. Oh dear, oh dear, that's not what I said. Oh, you most assuredly did. No, no. I said that a squirrel without a tail couldn't mount a hill of beans. It's an old opossum expression. I just thought your balance was probably affected, that's all. My balance? Yes. My balance? Well, actually, it was a little affected, yeah. I thought so. It was the same with me and my paw. Say what now? My left hind paw. The one I lost in the farmer's wire fence. Uh, but your paw is right... Well, I'll be a mockingbird's uncle. You don't have a paw. Nope. I never noticed that before. Oh, well, it doesn't slow me down in the least. I think I probably could mount a hill of beans without it, and you know what? It seems to me that a squirrel with no tail can do just about anything he sets his mind to. I mean, look at you, spending your solstice spreading kindness and good cheer. Uh, yeah, that's me. Kindness and good cheer. Well, here's my gift to add to your pile. It's not a paw, is it? Oh, me, oh my, of course not. What kind of a marsupial do you think I am? Here you go. It's homemade plum jam. Wherever did you get such a delicacy? Well, let's just say I know my way through that old farmer's fence now. And sometimes he throws out the darndest things. I figured the little raccoon types will have a feast with this stuff. Yum! That's delicious! Why, I could eat the whole jar myself! Uh, but I won't. Because of the, you know, raccoon, what's it? Uh, d thanks, Mr. O. Not at all, not at all. Glad I could help. Well, better get back to the family. The little ones will be ready for their bedtime solstice story. Happy solstice! And to you, Mr. O. Gosh, Nutso, is it just me or do we have the nicest neighbors in any forest ever? I'm not gonna lie to you, Nutty. 
I might be experiencing a slight fuzzy feeling that has nothing to do with my fur. Kind of a warm, tingly sensation. That's the one! You know what, Nutty? We're going to give it all back! Huh? All these gifts! We're going to give them all back! But not so, there isn't time! We'll never be able to get back through the forest before everyone wakes up tomorrow! Well, we'll just have to do our best, Nutty. Now, mush! Mush, I say! Uh, why aren't you mushing? Um, not so? Yes? Uh, the moo. I, I mean, there's some moo. The moon? Yes, it will help us guide our way. No, uh, not the moon. The, uh, the moose. Moose? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, you mean that moose right in front of you? The glowy one? That's the one. Nutty, I think the plum jam might have been spiked. Or magnanimous moose is real. Impossible. Well, it may be impossible, but she is now pushing our sleigh Sled. through the snow. Do you think she's trying to help us? Of course! She wants to help us give all the gifts back! Well, I'll be... It's a solstice miracle! And not so? Yes? Did you notice something? I did, Nutty. And what do you make of it? That if a one-antlered moose can be the spirit of solstice, then a tailless squirrel can be its heart! Now let's get all these gifts back to where they belong! Hooray! And I think I know just where to find some raccoon orphans. Really? Yeah. The strange human at the bottom of the hill. She's always helping animals from the forest with their hurt paws and scraped noses. Maybe this time we could help her. Not so? Yes, Nutty. Happy Solstice. Happy Solstice, Nutty. Happy Solstice, Magnanimous Moose. <laughs> Happy Solstice, everyone! The Squirrel Who Stole Solstice was written and directed by Marisa King. Marisa also voiced Nutty. Marisa King is an actor, director, and longtime animal advocate based in Toronto. You can also hear her on the award-winning Alba Salix podcast, as well as improvising her way through the wacky role-playing world of The End of Time and Other Bothers, all from Fable and Folly Productions at fableandfolly.com. Nutso and Mrs. Denutzio were played by Christy Bolton. Christy is an actor, improviser, director, and podcast producer in Hamilton and can be found at christybolton.com or on the socials in the show notes. Christy also performs in the dark comedy improvised podcast, Civilized. Learn more at civilizedpod.com. The original Squirrel Solstice Carol was written and performed by Julian Sark with backup squirrel vocals by Marisa King and Christy Bolton. Julian Sark is a deeply repressed creative based in Toronto. Due to the immense internal pressures at play, asking him to do literally anything will likely get you way, way more than you bargained for. Seriously, like get ready to screen your calls, people. He's also recently written a song he thinks would be perfect for Michael Buble. So Michael, if you're listening, find Julian on Facebook. Yes, he's that old. And I, Mike Howie, played Mr. O and worked with this fabulous team of creative geniuses to put the episode online for all of you. Thank you everyone for listening. And please remember to be kind, be curious, and be patient with each other. Happy Solstice, everyone, and happy Solstice, Magnanimous Moose. <sighs> Defender Radio and The Switch will return with new episodes in 2022. Acorns, acorns, golden brown, hiding in holes beneath the ground. Safely we stored you so we might savor you on this solstice night. Acorns, acorns, golden brown, hiding in holes beneath the ground. Safely we stored you so we might save you on this solstice night. Again, acorns, acorns, golden and brown, hiding in holes beneath the ground. Safely we stored you so we might save you on this solstice night. Acorns, 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 acor
golden brown, hiding in holes beneath the ground. Safely we store you so we might, savor you on this solstice night.